name's Grandad. This is the, well, the ways to trap, but it hasn't actually got a trap on. The original, that's what comes with the shower tray, which we could, we could put that under the floor and then just reduce it down to this three quarter pipe. But because it's a pumped outlet and it's going straight to a skin fitting, we're just going to use one without a, without a, basically without, with no trap on it. So all that's gonna happen, all I've done here is I've I've warmed this pipe up in some hot water just so it goes over this outlet and I've put two Jubilee clips on there. The reason they're underneath is because of the way the floor sits. I've, I've got a channel in the floor so that, that sits into the floor. And if I had the Jubilee clips on the top it might stop it from sealing against the bottom of the shower tray. So yeah. We're never going to be able to get to those once the shower tray is in, obviously, because it's fit, it's fixed. So it doesn't really matter that they're underneath and you can't get any access to them. Mm -hmm. So I've tightened those up. I'm going to test all this, pour some water through it before um, it actually fit it onto the shower tray, just to see if it leaks there, but hopefully not. And then all we're going to do then is this comes off. This is, this is actually going onto the top of the shower, the tray itself. A little that goes on that side that goes on the underside of the shower tray you don't use silicon on these and you just you screw this down tight and it creates a seal below the below the uh, shower tray and that creates it on the top and if you look carefully on these there is actually a right and wrong way to fit them because it's flat on this side and it's sort of tapered or I don't know what the word is, is it concave or anyway it's tapered you can feel it's thicker on that side than the outer side so that goes on the underside against the tray okay. and that's it I'm gonna fit that onto the shower tray in a minute and this has actually got a, a ridge in there which fits into that ridge there a really nice decent shower how let they are. So yeah, and then that's gonna. That's Where gonna, did we get that from? This is off the internet, but they were quite a standard, um, a good quality make of. Way they do a lot of plastic waste fittings and sort of plumbing gear. It's Serma Calpine stuff, not the cheapest, but they are good quality gear. So, yeah, it's only fit it once, isn't it? That just sits in there, you can see that look, you just sort of get it central to the to the hole. This will the, the top will sort of line it up if you like. Just screw that onto there. Mm. But this is it'll be a lot tighter that will. But uh, yeah. That's it really. But I've got to uh I'm going to test this now outside and just run some water through it before I finally fit it but that's the that's what's going to happen anyway on the shower tray that we've used it's actually got a pattern underneath on the base of it so it's pretty straightforward to follow the instructions really you just apply a standard silicon to here you go you're just following the pattern round um, yeah just pl uh, just follow the pattern around the base and then stick it to the floor really it's pretty easy then once you've done that it's just a case of uh, lift it into place trying to keep more on the tray than on yourself really and then just applying a bit of pressure all the way around even pressure all the way around to seal it to the floor
that's it. In. Right. And that's going to go straight to our gulper. Next injury of the day. <laughs> I might call this episode 24 hours in A&E. <laughs> How many injuries you can get in a day? <laughs> right. Perhaps we need a first aid port. Mm. in as well. Not measuring it, I'm just going with it. Good enough to want to lick the bowl. <laughs> Flushing like everybody else. Right then, back on my knees and get some tiles on the floor. We we'll put the tile adhesive actually on the floor, and then as you've just seen, where you, you apply it to the back of the tile as well. It's uh, a technique they call butter in the back of the tile. It does sound like a bit of a sexual fetish, but I don't. Anyway, it might be, but just let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, so we just carry on basically repeating that. In between each tile we've used um, spaces which are actually levelling spaces. They're a really good bit of kit. You just uh, stick the leveller underneath the tile edge and then uh, there's like a wedge that you stick on above the tile which keeps basically the two tiles or the four tiles actually all level so you've got no sort of bits when you, when you rub your hand on or rub your foot over it there's like a high or low spot on the tile. It's a great bit of kit.
it's made this job so much easier having the right tools for the job. It's always handy when you've got a family member who's in the trade. For me the best way of uh, marking these tiles that fit between the tile and the shower tray is to you flip the tile on its reverse side and put the good side up against the shower tray. Um, mark each cut both sides and then you've got your, your line that's going to run along the front of the shower tray. For the corner cuts we used a 115mm Ruby Super Pro Viper blade um, attached to an angle grinder which I would, to be honest I was really impressed with. You get a fantastic clean cut using this blade. As you can see the space is getting tighter in here as I start to work my way towards the, the doorway. doing a great job of this um, we're going to leave the tile in the corner not put down yet we're going to leave it up 
as a, and we're going to use it as a spare. We've only got exactly the right amount of tiles to do the whole bathroom. Um, and so just in case we do any breakages or anything goes wrong with them last few tiles, we have got the spare because the toilet is going in that corner. So it doesn't matter if there is no tile underneath it. Um, but hopefully, if all goes well, there'll be a tile in that corner as well. The correct way to knock these uh, levelling spaces out is actually to use a, a rubber mallet but weirdly I, I quite like the paint on my toes. To remove these you just hit them in the same direction as your grout line. It leaves the bit of the space uh, underneath the tile intact and then it just snaps the, the top piece off. But don't worry if it doesn't come out cleanly because you can always remove that little bit that's in the grout line with a sharp Stanley blade. And that's another top tip from Rice Tiling.